Hi seniors, you guys have um, about 33 insects in the Lepidoptera order that you are responsible for for the contest. What this presentation covers is only those senior uh, orders. There are two other presentations that you need to make sure that you view. That includes those for juniors and those for intermediates. <clears throat> so we're moving on to the Lepidoptera group. <coughs> These are all the butterflies and the moths. They, their host is going to vary depending on exactly what uh, butterfly or moth that you're looking at. And they're either inconsequential, beneficial, or they are a pest. It all just depends on what they feed on and what they do. All of the Lepidoptera have a complete life cycle. This is kind of easy for us to remember because we learn about butterflies in school as having the egg, the caterpillar, the pupa, and then the adult, the four stages that make it complete. And they all have a, a siphoning mouth part where they roll their long, long straw-like mouth parts out to siphon or suck up nectar. Siphoning is the best answer for what type of mouth part they have, but um, um, sucking or hostile it, if that's the only option you have, is going to be correct also. You, seniors have to know both the fall armyworm and the armyworm. If you remember, the fall armyworm had kind of a camo pattern um, to, its, to its front wings, and then the hind wings were very white or much lighter in color. The armyworm, just the plain armyworm, is also a pest. It's kind of a grayish brown in color as an adult, um, but the larvae are green to brown and they have stripes down each side. These guys do not have the Y on their head like the fall armyworm had, and so that may be a question. How do you differentiate between an armyworm and a fall armyworm? The adult, uh, again, is kind of fuzzy. It looks like a fall armyworm, but the coloring is different. Also, the pattern on the front wings is more speckled as opposed to being camouflage type. The buckeye butterfly is kind of an orangey brown butterfly, has some orange spots on it and these really pretty purpley blue eye spots along the back. They're found feeding on plants in the plantain group. And so plantains are kind of like a type of, of a um, banana. We probably don't grow many plantains here in Texas but there are other plants in that same family that the, the caterpillars are gonna feed on. The adults feed on nectar. These are inconsequential, don't do enough bad uh, to be considered a pest, at least here in Texas. Um, chewing, this chewing mouth parts as a larva, siphoning mouth parts as an adult, complete life cycle. Our cabbage butterfly, um, I would not try real hard not to get this confused with the alfalfa butterfly. The cabbage butterfly is not a cabbage looper, it's a separate one but it's also still a pest of coal crops. You guys need to know the cabbage loopers caterpillar, but the cabbage butterflies um, adult form. So they're white, very small, white with those brown tips and brown dots on its body. The coal crops, again, remember are um, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, um, um, lettuces and things like that. Um, okay, Cercopia moth is a really pretty moth, kind of looks like a polyphemus moth, except this is um, reddish brown in color. It's very pretty and very hairy, and it's a real cool looking moth, I think. The larvae are found on oak trees. So we had the polyphemus and the luna, and now we have a Cercopia moth found on oak trees. They all kind of have the same look to them, though, right? They kind of have their front wings, they're big moths. So if you can remember that, the big moths seem to all feed on oaks. Um, that will kind of help you up along in the contest. Um, these are inconsequential. Again, they don't feed on enough of the plant material to be considered necessarily a pest. The, cat the caterpillars, of course, are the ones that are feeding on the oak trees. The moths are feeding on nectar. Uh, we have cutworms here. Cutworms are a type of caterpillar that will roll itself up into a really tight ball. And these guys are a pest because they'll feed on plants and it's like somebody, they, they chew on the base of the plant as it's really young. So it's like somebody came with scissors and knocked your new plant over and just cut it in half. And then of course the plant usually doesn't come back out or if it does, it takes it a long time. So they are definitely a pest. The adults look similar to me, to both the fall armyworm and the armyworm. So make sure you try to put all three of those pictures side by side so you can figure out who is who and come up with some way to um, separate them out in your mind. Cutworms host is going to be grasses and plants, and it is considered a pest. Fall webworms are um, 
I think on the contest, you need to know the fall web form adult form. Their, uh, their host is going to be trees. Specifically, they like pecan trees, but they'll get on any tree at all. So know them to be feeding on trees. They make webs around the tree and then they'll chew and eat the leaves inside the web that they all made. Once that food is gone, they move over and make a new web someplace else after they've defoliated it. They're called fall webworms because in the fall is when their populations are the greatest and they usually do the most damage, but there usually are several generations a year. So we can see damage from fall, fall webworms as early as late spring. The forest tent caterpillar is, um, pretty interesting looking caterpillar. It's got blue stripes along its back. And then it has like, they call these keyhole markings down, down the middle of its back. I guess it kind of looks like a keyhole, but it's white spots and then that blue marking along the back. Um, they uh, like to feed on trees, but know them to feed on broad leafed trees. They do not, um, they do not make a web. What they make is a tent. So they'll usually be like in a in a, a crotch of a tree and like where the tree branches off and they'll make a web there, go out and feed and come back in. The great leopard moth is um, what usually around the fall time coming into winter time, we see these little woolly bears crawling across the road and they're all over the place. They say that the number you see and how dark they are tells you if it's going to be a cold winter or not. I don't know how true that necessarily is though. But these are great leopard moths because the moth looks like it's a leopard. It's got open holes in it, so that makes it different than the fall webworm, which have closed holes, and it's going to make it different than the salt marsh caterpillar as well. They are considered inconsequential. Uh, they like to feed on weeds. Uh, it says found on woods. That's supposed to be weeds. Um, and they are, um, the adults, of course, are going to feed on nectar somewhere, but the Larva feed on plant material from weeds. Indian meal moths. In the contest, what I really wish they would give you is an Indian meal moth picture with its wings closed, because with its wings closed, you can see the, the pattern in the wings and how it's kind of a pretty color. Um, that guy in the picture on the left has been touched enough times that it's lost a lot of its coloration in its wings, unfortunately. But when the wings are fresh, they have that creamy color and then this reddish color underneath it with a line straight down the middle. Um, Indian meal moths are pests of stored food products or stored grain. So we will find them in our pastas and our dog food and our bird seed and our um, cereals and things like that. And the adults will make these webs that are really noticeable, um, but the um, it, it just looks ugly inside of the food. But the adults usually go off somewhere to to hang out during the day. It's the larvae that are the damaging form in the food. Io moths are a cool moth, uh, I think. They're a pest uh, of trees and they'll also feed on corn, but they make a really cool caterpillar that has those little like trees um, all over its back. They have those bright hind, uh, eye spots on the hind wings. The color of the adult is, is a really pretty, um, orangey, a mustardy yellow. They have kind of pink on them. They're very, very fuzzy. If you were to grab the larva, those hairs that look like little trees might irritate your skin. So, you, so again, that's a form of aposematic coloration. It's hairy and it's you remember it, so you probably are not going to touch it next time if it does bother you. Morning cloak butterflies, not morning as in AM, morning as in grieving for someone that has died. They get their name because the color of the wings look like the cloaks that we used to use to cover the casket. So they were, they're mourning. Um, they're mourning the loss of somebody. These guys are found on willow trees. They spend the winter as adults, which is unique to butterflies because usually they overwinter as um, um, pupa most of the time. And they're also considered inconsequential. They don't do enough damage. Peach tree borers are pretty unique in the way that they look. Their wings are like translucent. So um, they're also sometimes called like clear winged moths or something like that. These are a pest of peaches. They have the name peach in their name. So they're probably found on peaches and they're probably gonna be a pest. What they do is that they lay their eggs on it and the larva um, tunnel into the, into the peach 
and they'll produce frass and they'll eat the peaches and they'll also mess up the, the overall tree. Pecan, cut, pecan nut case bearer is a teeny, 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 tiny, itty bitty moth. If you see the tiniest, tiniest moth, it's probably, it's gotta be a pecan nut case bearer. They're itty bitty. They make a teeny tiny larva that, that lives inside of the pecan tree and does damage to the pecans. So these are a pest and the host is going to be your pecan trees. Question marks, they, the way that I remember them is they have this kind of funny angular look to their wings, you know, these little points to them. Um, and on the underside of the wings, they have what looks like a question mark. I've never actually seen it. I just look at that kind of pointy and that, that funny shape. They almost look like leaves um, to the shape of the, the edges of their wings. These are considered a pest. They're a pest of elm trees. Um, found on elms, feeding on elms can be a pest. All right, well, the salt marsh caterpillar is um, kind of like a great leopard moth, but it doesn't have the open holes. It's black and it is white, white with black spots on it, but the great leopard moth, the holes were kind of just circles, outlined circles of black. These are solid circles. Salt marsh caterpillars are pests of grasses and weeds. The females have white hind wings and the males actually have yellow hind wings. You can tell the difference between the males and the females. Caterpillars are fuzzy. You probably wouldn't want to touch one of those. Probably isn't going to taste very good to, <clears throat> to a um, predator if it got close to it. These are pests again, um, and their host is going to be grasses and weeds, complete life cycle, lepidoptera, siphoning mouth parts like all of them are. Okay, this is the sorghum webworm. So this is gonna be a caterpillar that you're gonna see for the contest. Think about the other insects that we had as caterpillars. We had the pink bollworm, which was pink. We had the cabbage looper, which was very green. We had, um, uh, oh, the, um, um, the one that's in beehives, the greater wax moth, which just looked like a maggot. It was white and creamy. This guy looks different than those. It has a little white on it, but it also has some brown stripes. This has the name sorghum in it. Sorghum is a type of grain, so it's going to be a pest found on sorghum. It attacks the heads of the sorghum. It consumes the grain before we're able to utilize it, um, and the larvae have four dark stripes down its back. So pest, host is sorghum. The caterpillar is the damaging form. That is the case for all of these in the Lepidoptera group. Then we have the southwest corn borer, which is also a pest of corn. Um, bores into the corn stalks and the corn falls over for the contest. I, I don't know if you need to know the borer or if you need to know the moth. Um, in your guide for, in your Texas 4-H entomology guide that's found online, if it is a picture of the caterpillar, that's what you need to know. If it's a picture of the moth, that's what you need to know. And you can find those off of the a and website. I've also shared them with you, so you should um, hopefully have them. And if you don't, just ask me, I'll send them to you. And then we have our tiger swallowtail. This is almost the last one that we're going to cover. Tiger swallowtails, we had the black swallowtail and we had the giant swallowtail. Both of those were black with yellow stripes. Black swallowtail was mainly black with only yellow around the bottom. The giant swallowtail was black with, um, with like two stripes, kind of made a triangle on the back of yellow. Tiger swallowtail is yellow with black stripes. That's how tigers are shaped, right? This is considered um, beneficial. They're a pest of, of things in the cherry family, um, but we don't grow true cherry trees here, so they're not considered a, a true pest for us. They are beneficial because the, because the butterflies are pollinators. And then finally, we have our viceroy. The viceroy mimics the monarch butterfly. Um, predators also, it's a, it's a mimicry because predators remember if the monarch tastes bad, they're going to avoid this guy because it looks close enough as well. The big difference between a monarch and a viceroy is that they have this black um, line that goes across the body, so, or across the hind wing. So if you see that, it's a viceroy. It is not a monarch. They are considered inconsequential. The host for these guys are poplar trees, so they're not found on milkweed. Um, and... Uh, that is the last one of our Lepidoptera, which are our butterflies and our moths for the state 4-H contest.